so this is LR circuit. I started the drawing some of it to save a little bit of time. Um, let's see what else. So uh, oh, I guess we can look at that here. So this is the um, this is a typical model of an inductor. It's uh, this uh, a toroid that. Um, that I've been showing around and passing around. You've seen this toroid in front of you before. Um, so this is a typical model of an inductor. It's, um, mm, and this is the video that I keep saying I'll make. Uh, you can calculate, the, come up with the formula for inductance of this. It's the exact same way we did it for the uh, solenoid. It's just, but I'll do it in a video and upload it. So for here, what's important is that this has an inductance that if you can calculate it, you can at least measure it. So I got this uh, inductance meter a while ago. So we can actually measure the inductance right now so that we, this uh, um, inductor that we are using, we can just measure its inductance and just use that value. We don't have to you know, calculate it or whatever. So um, with all its measuring thing. And when it measures, I want to write it down somewhere so that I don't forget. All right, so I don't know if everyone can, yeah, you guys definitely cannot see this. Uh, let me focus again. Um, yeah, you definitely cannot read it. You will have to take my word for it. Here, it says MH. So what it's saying is that this is the value of the inductance. It's saying that the inductance here is 7.4 milli Henry, or 7.4 times 10 to the minus 3 Henry. And if you look at it really carefully here, or you can do it after class, there's a little omega symbol here. Now, I set it on a mode where it measures the resistance of the inductor. Now, ideal inductor doesn't have resistance, but it's made up of real wire. So it actually has resistance of 1.47 ohm, which you know, seems reasonable, right? That's the kind of resistance of wire that you have seen of a reasonable amount of length, like a meter, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, all right. So that's our inductor. So we are going to use this inductor. Um, so you know. So th this is the thing about the inductance. It's a property of this object. It's determined by the property of this uh, core that I'm using and the geometry of the wire. So once it's determined, then um, inter as far as the circuit is, uh, as far as the circuit goes, once you know the value of the inductance, then you just use it. You don't uh, have to worry about uh, anything beyond that. You just have to know that it's a constant. Good. OK, so we are using this inductance to um, so analyze this uh, inductor register circuit. So let's go through the same thing that we did for capacitor circuit. Imagine that, so actually we are going to go in the proper order this time. Uh, we are not going to say the inductor is charged up for some mysterious reason. We'll say. It starts out uncharged. It's just a coil of wire connected to register. So if I want to complete the, or uh, start building the LR circuit, uh, where I have this, uh, where I have this uh, one end of inductor, I'd uh, hook up a uh, register there. So that would, be, that would be my LR circuit. Um, this is 100 ohm, by the way. Uh, I got different resistance. Um, and you know, nothing interesting is happening until you connect it to a battery. So let's say at time equals zero. At time equals zero, we connect it. How much current do you think would flow at the exact moment when you connect the uh, battery? Or like exact moment right after when you connect the battery? What would you say is the, uh, what would you say is the amount of current that flows at Time equals zero. Any guesses? Intuitive guesses? Yes? Could you just add the resistance of the inductor and the. Yeah, so once again, I would not do that. Um, so, uh, any kind of formulas and uh, things that memorized, you memorized by road for register circuit, forget it. It's not going to apply. Because when you, I mean, that's the point of looking at this, right? The way register behaves in a circuit, it's of an entirely different kind from inductor. Whatever you thought worked with the register does not work with inductor. Inductor does not have resistance. 
So I mean, I mean, this says that R, but for here, just imagine that it's uh, an ideal inductor. And the question is, how much current will fall that at the exact moment? So you know, whatever you are considering, if it doesn't account for the fact that this is an inductor, you're not doing it right. So you know, otherwise, I might have just replaced the wire. So. Um, so you know you have to think through the property of inductor. So as you, I probably should have left it at the other screen. So as you think through the property of inductor, um, this is so this is where you can see if you actually understand uh, understand what an inductor is beyond the, uh, beyond just uh, knowing that oh that's the definition of inductance. So I think the. Um, the equation I consider when I try to understand the uh, qualitative behavior of inductor is this, that the voltage change across the inductor is equal to inductance L times di dt. I mean, I'm just uh, taking this same expression here, solving it for V. So you, you have to visualize, go through the consequences of um, I guess um, it's probably good to guess and check. So here, if you are, I don't know, trying to guess what value of i would be, let's try. Let's say we are trying to make um, make like. So we are not trying to guess an exact value of i, because um, that would be too difficult. Let's try to make a multiple choice. Let's uh, put imagine all the different values of I, that i could take. Uh, one particular value in one category and other values in a different category. Any value you think would be special? Yeah, zero is a special value for many reasons. Here I can at least give you one other reason than the usual reason. I can say, well, um, the, here the reason zero is special is current at time less than zero. Well, that was actually zero because that was before you connected it. The current through the inductor was zero before anything was connected. All right, so zero is one type of value. So if we are trying to guess um, multiple choice A and B, we might guess the current is equal to zero, or we might guess current is not equal to zero. Uh, how many think it's A? How many think it's B? Yeah, so if you think it's B, what other value do you think a current can be? So let's just, you know, if you don't have a good guess for other value the current can be, let's just start out with the same, all right, let's suppose it's not equal to, uh, it's not equal to zero. So I'll tell you to start out with the correct answer. So correct answer is zero. So what I'm trying to do now is uh, what some of my call proof by contradiction, although I won't go through the whole rigorous thing, but I want to kind of show that this is impossible. So in physics and math, to show something is impossible, you assume that the impossible thing happens. And when you follow the logical consequences of that, at some point you will hit uh, something that's absurdly, patently false. That's when you know the thing that you assumed was incorrect, therefore it's impossible. Okay? So I'm going to assume that the current that's flowing right now, it's not zero, that this is some value I not. All right, so I want to um, go through some consequences of what this means. I feel like it will be helpful to have a plot. So if I plot my current as a function of time, uh, this is what it means. Let me say this point is time equals zero. So my current was zero up until this point, and at time equals zero, it takes on some other value that I'm going to call I naught. And you know, after that, who knows? It might be increasing, decreasing, staying constant. I don't really care. But it's uh, up to this point that I have the mental picture work, worked out. And I want to find something here that's um, uh, inconsistent with the other features of the circuit. And my main tool is, well, what's listed here and most especially this. Like, what do you see that's not physically possible? Current. 
current can depend on time, and that's not. So, I, so okay. Um, I find so what I'm imagining my role to be right now is to be someone who provides all the counter examples. So, so you guys are think. So some of you are thinking, can current depend on time? Sure, it can. Uh, if I build a circuit without. Oops, uh, if I build a circuit without inductor, I can very easily make it depend on time um, in a way that'll, so here's one easy way I can make a current to depend on time. I can uh, take this circuit and I'm going to build a separate circuit here. I'm just going to build a, a register circuit with a one kilo ohm register. And what I'm going to do now is connect this uh, uh, voltage source across this one kilo ohm register. Good. Let me turn off B because I'm not doing anything with the B right now. So what you're seeing here right now is the uh, voltage uh, for A, right? And you see, well, it depends on time. The voltage was some value, and then it's zero, and then it's some other value. and. Um, here, because that voltage is across the register, according to this relationship here, I is equal to V over R, your current is exactly the same function of time that V is. So current can be function of time. Current can change. That part I find no problem with. But what you may have to look at more, look, look at uh, with more detail is how current depends on time. Yeah, so it, that is an important thing, that this voltage here is proportional to the rate of change of current, not the current itself. If it was proportional to current itself, I would have no trouble with that kind of current change. So when you have this kind of change in current, how, is that, uh, how does that cause difficulty when you have an inductor in the circuit? So, so actually, so you know, when you see change that looks like this, how large is your DI dt? Like very large, right? It's this slope. It can be infinite depending on how you idealize this. So it, that means if you have infinite DI dt, you have infinite uh, change in voltage. But you know, in this circuit, I have only finite amount of voltage here for you not. So that's the contradiction I was looking for. If I want to say my current suddenly changes to a new value, this uh, requires an infinite rate of change when it happens. So I cannot have an infinite rate of change without an infinite voltage. Here's another way to intuitively sort of conceptually explain this. Inductor register, not current, the register registers current. Inductor registers change in current. So whenever you have inductor in a circuit, current can only change at a finite rate. What that means is that when you graph your current plot, uh, so it can change as a function of time, but it'll have to change as some constant, it'll have to change as some uh, non-infinite non rate or finite rate, so that uh, the current as a time, this curve will always be continuous. Yep. So, um, yeah, so what we can say is that, okay, at time equals zero, my current is still zero. And the rest of what we are going to work out is going to describe how this current changes from zero to some other non-zero value. 